Hi, so today I want to talk to you about some graphic novels and comics that I've read recently because I have really found an appreciation for them over the last couple of years. I've never really delved into this subgenre of literature, maybe until about 2022. I did read the Heartstopper books, the first few, a while back, but I never really explored the superhero side of things until semi-recently. And I'm not sure why, because I remember loving the Simpsons comics as a child and I've always liked the Marvel and DC films. For some reason, I just assumed that comics weren't really for me. They do have kind of a, a stigma to them a little bit still, which is silly because the films are like the biggest film franchises in the world. But I found an appreciation for them recently and I have a few that I want to talk to you about today. I have some DC, some Marvel and one from IDW, which is interesting. Um, there's a whole bunch of different characters <laughs> featured in these stories. And if you have any recommendations for graphic novels or comics that you think I would enjoy, please leave them in the comments. I am open to pretty much any genre, any company, whatever you think um, I would enjoy, anything you've enjoyed recently, please let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I'm here talking about books whenever I feel like it. Um, so I'd like for you to stick around. So without any further ado, let's start talking about the books. First book I want to talk about is Godzilla, The Half Century War by James Stoke. If you don't know who Godzilla is, where have you been? He is a giant monster who is from Japanese cinema, but there's obviously a lot of American films as well. And if you don't know who he is, then I don't really know where you've been on the planet. But anyway, this is about Godzilla. And he first comes out in 1954 in the comic and obviously causes mass destruction. And there's a man who we follow for 50 years. That's why it's called the Half Century War. And he is tasked with tracking Godzilla and trying to come up with ways to destroy him or get him off the planet or whatever. Basically, stop Godzilla from destroying the world. And we explore this man's relationship with Godzilla from 1954 all the way up to 2004. And every time Godzilla emerges, this man is there with his team. And obviously, over the course of 50 years, his relationship with the monster completely changes. Like, at first, it's like fear and anger. And then they start to have like a almost respect for each other. Um, he definitely comes to respect Godzilla. And it's just like a really interesting character study about how something can stay with you for so long and your relationship can grow with it and the best thing about this though is not even the story it is the artwork the artwork and this was absolutely gorgeous so i'll put some examples on the screen but the pages were all so vibrant they all had these really warm tones and um, like oranges reds yellows but they contrasted so nicely with godzilla who was always really cool you know like um dark blues blacks almost grays and the contrast of the colors on the page just pop so beautifully and what I really appreciate as well is that the panels and the artwork never look too busy. I think sometimes comics can get quite confusing. You don't even know which box you're meant to read next. But this was all very straightforward and everything was just like so crisp and beautifully drawn. I honestly just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I think it was some of my favourite, maybe my favourite art that I've ever experienced in a graphic novel. I just think, especially the colours, the colours were just like... Every single page, I can believe how beautiful they were. So if you are interested in Godzilla in any way, I would definitely recommend this book. Even if you aren't interested in Godzilla, if you appreciate good artwork and you like graphic novels, please give this a try. It was absolutely stunning. And I actually got this big Godzilla bundle from his website called Humble Bundle. And that um, was about £15, I think, something like that. And it came with like 25 Godzilla graphic novels. This is the only one I've read so far, but if this is anything like the other ones, I know I'm going to enjoy them all. So this is a strong recommendation, and I think that even if you just like art in general, you would enjoy this book. The next book I want to talk about is The Punisher, King of Killers, and this is a two-volume little mini-series about the Punisher, who is a character I've never read anything about before. I do know who he is because of, one, just pop culture, and two, because I watched the... Um, Daredevil Netflix show a few years ago and he showed up in a later season so I do know who the character is but even if you don't this is a great introduction to him it goes through his backstory and it shows him in the present day dealing with this kind of mystical magical um, gang called the Hand which are like a martial arts clan in the Marvel Universe I don't really know how to describe them and um, they're like ninjas and stuff and the story was way more like fantastical and mystical than I expected I thought the Punisher stories were always gonna be kind of more ground level but this went to some really magical <laughs> places and um, it was definitely a strong fantasy book I feel like fantasy you would probably enjoy this and something that I thought was kind of crazy about this one was how violent it was it was the most gory graphic novel I've read for sure I feel like it was um, <laughs> non-stop violence people getting their head chopped off arms chopped off blood spraying everywhere and i can't lie it was enjoyable it was fun to read 
it was quite dark at times and um, it does deal with a, quite a dark backstory for the character but just like the Godzilla one I just talked about the artwork in this was so vibrant and so beautiful and again also like Godzilla this is probably why I enjoyed it so much it was really easy to follow really easy to read and something I also really enjoyed was that whenever there was flashbacks the flashbacks are drawn in a completely different art style so you were never getting lost as to like why am I suddenly here instead of there and um, it's very clear like when a flashback starts which I love because I think some graphic novels I've read in the past you jump around time and location and like flashbacks and stuff quite a bit and you don't fully know what's going on I don't know some so clear so easy to read and I enjoyed it quite a lot it's definitely one for adults it is a violent story <laughs> um, it's very bloody and a little bit dark as well but it was really enjoyable. Now I'm going to talk about some classic comics so I've talked about these quite a few times so I won't badger on and on about them again but this is one of the Penguin Classics Marvel Collection books and this is the Avengers one and it's the only one I've read so far this year I have two others that I need to get to I have Fantastic Four and X-Men but I absolutely love these books they are so fun and vibrant and beautiful and they are a great gateway into the original stories that these heroes featured in and something that I struggle with a lot about with the Avengers one is the other ones I've read had very clear start and end points for their stories. So like the Spider-Man one for the most part was chronological, like his very first comic and then just kind of went from there. It did skip a few in the middle, but it never like cut off in the middle of a story. And the Black Panther one told like a complete story arc. Whereas this Avengers one is more interested in just showing you the first appearance of as many characters as they could. Which is fun because it does show you the first appearance of a lot of characters that you love from the MCU. But it does mean that you can be getting invested in a story. They can have like three comics in a row and you're really getting into it. The villains, the heroes, what's going on. And then suddenly it will jump like six months in publishing history. And you'll just be in like the middle of a completely different story with a completely different villain. So after a while I stopped getting invested in the stories because they just kept getting cut off. So while I did appreciate this for, you know, seeing all the different characters and just the artwork itself. I just love the way they've printed these. I feel like everything is so colourful and fun. Um, I didn't appreciate this from a storytelling point of view. I would feel like compared to the other ones I've read, the Black Panther and the Spider-Man. And I've read another one as well, which isn't coming. Oh, Captain America. Um... This is more of just like a random flick through of Marvel history rather than trying to tell a story, which is fine. Um, it's still really enjoyable, but it isn't great if you're trying to get invested in a storyline. Finally, the last comic I'm going to talk about needs no introduction if you are a comics fan. It is one of the most popular and famous Batman stories, and this is The Killing Joke. This is about the Joker's origin and then also about the symbiotic relationship between the Batman and the Joker and how they kind of need each other to thrive and live and have purpose in their lives as heroes and villains. So it's a really interesting story and it's only about 64 pages. I actually thought I'd read it before but as I was reading it I think that I actually had just read the Wikipedia page before because the story beats were familiar to me but the artwork was all new and I thought the art was really impressive. I enjoyed it a lot. And I read the re-release which had the original artists um, recolouring because if you don't know, a lot of the time when comics are made, the story, the art and the colouring are all done by like three different people. Um, so the original artist envisioned this really dark, tragic, horrible story to go along with the text and the story that the writer had made. But then the colourist in the original version made it like bright and psychedelic, which is definitely unique and memorable but doesn't really fit the tone of the story so I thought this re-release with the darker colours, the more muted tone um, really added a lot to the atmosphere of the story which is very dark, very almost depressing at times. It is a very violent disturbing story. It's not violent in the same way that the Punisher one was violent. I feel like that was more cartoonish violence you know with like arms flying off and heads getting chopped off. This was more grounded in reality so it definitely is not a book for children. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit dark and the subject matter is quite difficult at times but it really does pack an emotional punch in just a short time frame. It's a really tight, impressive story and I really understand why it has become a fan favourite and why it is so famous. So those were all of the comics and graphic novels that I wanted to talk to you about today. If you enjoyed these recommendations please let me know in the comments down below what ones you plan on picking up. Also, please give me a comment down below with any of your own recommendations. Like I said, I will read pretty much any genre, any character, anything that you think I might enjoy, please leave it down below. I know that I kind of only talked about superheroes for the most part today and then obviously Godzilla, but comics and graphic novels cover like basically everything you can imagine. Anything you can get in a normal novel, there's a graphic novel with similar or sometimes the same stories. I know that there's like 
graphic novel retellings of like Wuthering Heights and stuff like that, which definitely interests me. I think I should probably give them a try um, for some of my favourite books. I think that could be quite cool. I'm just like spitballing a lot here, realising as I'm talking, I'm like, that actually sounds really good. So if you read any of those, let me know down below, like classic novels but retold as graphic novels. Please let me know. Uh, I think that'd be great. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Please leave a like. And again, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And I will hopefully see you next week. I'm on a roll right now, making videos. I may just jinx it by saying that, but you know, touch wood. I may see you again next week. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.